Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the process of solving some problems dealing with the notion of simple linear equations. Simple linear equations and the problems, the examples that we're going to do, example number three and example number four, are the ones that you will find on page number 34. On page 34, we have two examples that I just, I just said, example number three and example number four, that deal with the notion of simple linear equations. And then they give you five more problems and as a sample exercise, sample problems, altogether a grand total of seven. A grand total of seven. If you feel that that's not enough, seven problem is not enough, and if you feel that you need more practice, there are some other videos you can watch. Just type in T is math, T is math, day 51 through 55. There are five videos there which are very similar to the problems that you will encounter on the HESI. The math on the T's is very similar to what one, can, one encounters on the HESI. They are very comparable. T's, that's a series of 80 videos there. Day number 51 through 55 is where you're going to find the problem dealing with the notion of simple linear equations. In addition to that, if you're really gung-ho, if you really want to, if you're really motivated, if you need more practice, there's a series of basic math. In the series of basic math, we did several videos dealing with linear equations. These are the days number here. Basic math, day number 14, 29, 67, and then 51 through 55, and 166 to 171. As you go higher up in the numbers, they get more and more difficult. You're not going to encounter, you're not going to encounter anything as complicated as what you will find here. If you just do these five videos and these three, 14, 29, and 67, that should be more than plenty, along with the ones that we are about to do. Do you understand? That should be more than plenty. Perhaps if you want to do five more, that's it. But these, as I said, are more complicated. Let's get going, shall we? Example number three. Example number three, it tells us 4x plus 5 equals 17. The reason why they're called simple linear equations, the reason why they're called simple is because these are in fact very simple equations. There's not much in there. We are told that, we are told that uh, on page number 34, just give me one second, I lost my page number here. Page number 34, we are told that uh, 4x plus 5 equals 17, right here. 4x plus 5 equals 17. We want to solve for x. We want to solve for x, which means we have to get rid of this 5 somehow. We can get rid of this 5 if we subtract 5 from this side. Or if you're going to subtract 5 from that side, we must subtract 5 from that side. Otherwise, otherwise the equation will no longer be in balance. If we, if we subtract 5 from here, we must subtract 5 from there. So now we have a positive 5 here. We have a positive 5 positive 5 and a negative 5, they're going to kill each other, they're gone. That was the whole point. And we end up with 4x, which comes down, equals 17 minus 5, which is 12. 17 minus 5, which is 12. We're not interested in the value of 4x, we want to find how much is 1x. That's very simple. Divide both sides by 4 and you're done. If we divide both sides by 4, what we end up here, if we divide both sides by 4, what we end up here is 4 is going to kill it. The four, four on the top and the four on the bottom, they're going to kill each other, and we end up with x. We end up with x being equal to twelve divided by twelve divided by four, which is three. At this point, it's always a good idea. It's always a good idea to invest a few more seconds as an insurance, buy an insurance policy, plug it, plug back the value that you arrived at in the prob in the given original problem, and see if it actually works. Let's do it, shall we? Let's verify it. 4x plus 5, we were told, 4x plus 5, we were told, has to equal 17. And we are claiming that x is equal to 4. We are claiming that x is equal to 3. If x is in fact equal to 3, which we don't know yet, we will verify it in a second. If x is in fact equal to 3, it should satisfy this equation. 4 times 3, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 5, 12 plus 5, there you go, 12 plus 5 equals 17. It checks out. It checks out, it is correct. Let's do number 4, shall we? Question number four. Example number four tells us that negative seven k minus four, negative 
7k minus 4 equals negative 21. This is example number 4. Again, we want to get rid of we want to get rid of uh, we want to get rid of this uh, four from here. But before we do that, before we get rid of, before we worry about getting rid of this four, what we have to realize in this equation, okay, listen carefully. What we have to realize in this equation is that every single term, every single term is negative, negative seven, negative four, negative twenty-one. Every single term in this equation is negative. Why don't we multiply the whole equation by negative one and convert everything into positive? It will make our life that much easier. It will make our lives that much easier. Let's do that. Let's take this side, negative 7k minus 4, and multiply it by negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 7k minus 4. We're just going to multiply this equation, this side by 4, negative 1. If we do that, we have to do the same thing here. Here we have negative 21. Negative 21, we have to multiply it by negative 1. Since we're multiplying both sides of the equation by negative 1 here, negative 1, we multiply it here and multiply this side by negative 1. Since we are multiplying both sides of the equation by the same number, it's okay. We're not changing the value of it. And now we just do it out. Negative 1, negative 1 times negative 7, negative 1 times negative 7, as you see, negative times negative is going to become positive. That was the whole point. That was exactly the whole point. Negative times negative is positive. 1 times 7 is 7. So it becomes positive 7. Positive 7k. Again, negative 1 times negative 4 is going to become positive 4. And here, negative 21 times negative 1, negative and negative, will become positive, will end up with positive 21. This equation is much better than the original ugly thing that they gave us. By multiplying the entire equation by negative 1, we converted all the terms, negative 7k became positive 7k, negative 4 became positive 4, negative 21 became positive 21. Now we can do what we have to do. Let's subtract 4 from both sides. Let's subtract 4 from both sides so that we can get rid of this so that we can get rid of this positive 4. This positive 4 is going to kill the negative 4. They're going to go away. And what we are left on this side is 7k, which has to equal, which has to equal 21 minus 4. How much is 21 minus 4? 21 minus 4, 21 minus 4 is going to be 17. And we're not interested in the value of 7k, we want 1k, so let's divide both sides by 7. Divide both sides by 7. 7 is going to drop out and k equals 17 over, 17 over 7. k equals 17 over 7. k equals 17 over 7, which you can leave it like this if you want, or you can express that as mixed fraction. 17 over 7 is same as, is same as 14 plus 3 over 7. Or, or if you like, it is same as, it is same as 14 over, 14 over 7 plus 3 over 7, which in turn is same as 2, 14 over 7 is 2, and 3 seventh. k equals 2 and 3 seventh. Now we need to go back and put this value back in the original equation and make sure it satisfies it. But we're not going to put it in that equation, we're going to put it in this positive version of it because it's easier. 7k plus 4 has to equal 21. That's what we have to verify. We have to verify now. We have to verify now that 7k plus 4 it does in fact equal 21. 7k plus 4 does equal does indeed equal 21 when the value of the k is what we claim it to be. We claim we are claiming the claim that we are making the assertion that we are making is that k equals 2 and 7 thirds. But we're not going to put in this value. If you substitute the value of k in this form in here it will make your life miserable. Let's leave it like this. We're going to substitute in this form 17 over 7. We're going to substitute the value of the k in this form 17 over 7. And you will see in a second why. You will see in a second the, the rationale behind it. 7k. 7 times k which is 17 over 7. 17 over 7 plus 4. Watch what happens. We have a 7 on the top here. We have, we have a 7 in the bottom here. We have a 7 on the top. They kill each other. They're going to drop out. And what we end up with is 17 plus 4 is what we end up. 17 plus 4 is indeed 21. 17 plus 4 is 21. It works. It works. We are done with the two examples that they give us. Now we're going to do the sample problems. Sample problems from, from 6 through 10. Sample problems from 6 through 10 on the next page, on page number 35. So let's get going. 
page 35. Sample problems. Problem number six. Problem number six tells us that 3x minus 5 equals 10. 3x minus 5 equals 10. Let's add 5 to both sides of the equation. Let's add 5 to both sides of the equation. Why, why do we want to add 5? Because we have a negative 5 here, a negative 5 and a positive 5, they're going to kill each other. When we add 5 to both sides, this negative 5 appears on that side as positive 5. And we end up here with 3x, positive, negative 5 and negative, positive 5, they kill each other. And here on this side, we end up with 10 plus 5, which is 15. Again, we're not interested in the value of 3x. We want to find out what 1x is. Let's divide both sides by 3. So 3s are going to cancel out. And we end up with x equals to 15 over 3. 15 over 3 is 5. 15 over 3 is 5. What we're claiming now, the claim that we're making, the assertion that we're making is that x equals 5. We have to go back and put it back in the, we have to go back and put it in the original equation that was given to us and make sure it works, make sure it satisfies the equation. That's how we speak. The mathematician will say, make sure that it satisfies the equation. That's the geek language for, for saying, make sure it works. The equation has to be satisfied. The equation was 3x plus, 3x minus 5, not plus 5, 3x minus 5 has to equal 10 and x we are claiming is 5 so if x is 5 then 3 times 5 3 times 5 is 15 15 minus 5 15 minus 5 15 minus 5 is 10 it works it works it is the right value it is the correct value of the x let's do the next one number 7 problem number 7 Problem number 7 says, negative 2x minus a 2 negative 2x minus a 2 has to equal 14. Has to equal 14. Okay, watch what happens. We're going to add positive 2 to both sides. And again, we do that so that this negative 2 and this positive 2, they're going to kill each other. And we end up with negative 2x, negative 2x on that side equals, equals 14 plus 2, which is 16. Again, we are not interested in the value of negative 2x, we want the x by itself. We need to divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. So let's divide this side of the equation by negative 2. And let's divide this side of the equation by negative 2. And whenever I do that, I have to go back and pick up my equal sign and put it properly so that it looks nice. It's just, it's just purely for aesthetic reasons. Aesthetic, aesthetic, it's purely for aesthetic reasons. No other purpose. It serves no other purpose for me to pick it up and put it here. It just looks pretty. So here we have negative. Put, put parentheses around it if it makes it easier for you to see. Negative 2 divided by negative 2. They're going to kill each other. And we end up with x. x equals x equals 16 divided by negative 2, which is negative 8. Which is negative 8. That's the claim we are making. Now we have to go back and verify, make sure it works. We are told that negative 2x, negative 2x minus a 2 has to equal 14. Let's see what, let's see what happens. x is negative 8, negative 2 times negative 8 minus a 2. Well, how much is how much is negative two times negative eight? If you like, you can put a parenthesis here. We had this discussion yet just yesterday. Negative two times negative eight. Negative times negative is positive, and two times eight is sixteen. Positive sixteen. Positive sixteen. And a negative two. Positive sixteen and a negative two is positive fourteen, which is exactly what we have on this side. It works. It works. Number eight. Question number eight. Question number eight says two y plus three 
2y plus 3 equals 12. 2y plus 3 equals 12. Let's subtract 3 from both sides. Let's subtract 3 from both sides. We are subtracting 3 so that we have here positive 3 and a negative 3. They're going to kill each other. And we end up with 2y on this side. And 2y has to equal, 2y must equal, 2y must equal 12 minus 3, which is a 9. Oh, 9, what the hell? That's a weird, weird, weird number. Weird number because we're not gonna, we're not going to get a whole number. We're not going to get an integer for the value of x. It's okay. No need to fret. No need to, no need to fret. No need to x. Let's divide both sides by 2. 2's are going to cancel out and we end up with y is equal to 9 over 2 which is 4 and a half. Let's verify, shall we? Let's verify. Put it back in the original equation. Make sure it works. So the original equation is right here. Where can we verify it? Let's verify it right here. 2y plus 3. 2y plus 3 and y we are saying is 4 and a half. Again, we're not going to put we're not going to put the value of y in this form. It will be easier if you put it in this form. y equals to 9 over 2. So 2y, 2 times y, 2y plus 3 has to equal 12. That was the original equation. 2y plus 3 equals 12. 2 and y we are claiming is 9 over 2. 9 over 2 plus 3. Let's see what, they give, what, what it gives us. We have, we have 2 on the top. We have 2 on the bottom. They're going to kill each other. They're going to cancel out. And what we end up is 9 plus 3, 9 plus 3 is 12, which is exactly what we have here. It works. It works. It's verified. Let's do the next one, number 9, the penultimate one. Number 9, the penultimate one. When did we learn the word fret and vex? Well, the answer is very simple. We never did. I find it very peculiar. I thought that we had. We have not. I'm going to make a note so that we can learn it, learn these words in the future. To fret, to, to vex, uh, means to get irritated, to get annoyed, to get worked up. Don't get worked up, don't get annoyed, don't get frustrated, uh, don't vex, don't get, uh, don't, don't, don't get vexed, don't, don't fret. When, when value of the variable turns out to be a mixed number. Just, there is a way around it. There is always a way around it. The way around it is to put it in this form. Don't put it in that form. 9 over 2. And the 2 will, two will, two will kill each other. Number nine, number 9, the penultimate one. Number 9 tells you 4x plus 5 equals negative 19. 4x plus 5 equals negative 19. Number 9, the penultimate one. The penultimate problem. Penultimate, as, we, as you know, we have, we, have come, we have come across this word many a times. As you know, it's just a very fancy way of saying second to the last second to the last. We learned this word in our vocabulary lessons on day number 11. Vocabulary. Just type in vocabulary words day 11 and you will see the video. Vocabulary words. It's supposed to be 1 through 100 but as I speak right now there are so far 75 videos. I have 25 more to do. Do you understand? I have done 75 lessons. There are 25 more to go. In the series we'll have 100 videos. Let's subtract 5 from both sides. If we subtract 5 from both sides, what happens is we have a positive 5 here and a negative 5 here. The positive 5 and a negative 5 are going to kill each other and we are left with only the 4x on this side. And 4x has to equal 4x has to equal negative, negative 19 and a negative 5 is negative 24. 
We are not interested in the value of 4x, we want the x by itself. Let's divide both sides by 4. Let's divide both sides by 4. How much is negative 4? How much is how much is negative 4 divided by 4? Here the 4 is going to cancel out. That's the whole point. Here we left with just x. Negative 4 divided by 4 is a negative 6. We're not done yet. We need to verify that answer. Make sure that answer is correct. Let's put it back here. Verify it. 4x plus 5. We are 4x plus 5 has to equal negative 19. 4x plus 5 has to equal negative 19. And we are claiming that x is equal to negative 6. Let's put it in here. 4 times negative 6 plus a 5. How much is 4 times negative 6? 4 times 6 would have been 24. 4 times 6 would have been 24. Therefore, 4 times negative 6 would be negative 24. Would be negative 24. A negative 24 and a positive 5. A negative 24 and a positive 5 would equal negative 19, which is exactly what we have on this side. It, it works. It checks out. It checks out. Let's do the very last one, number 10. Number 10 says negative 5 equals number 10 negative 5 equals 6m minus 1 negative 5 equals 6m minus 1 6m minus 1 the variable up, variable happens to appear on the left hand side on the right hand side here Usually they appear on the left hand side, that's the norm, that's the tradition, that's the convention. They, have, they are violating the convention, they are violating the norm, it's not a big deal, it's, it's alright, calm down. Instead of, instead of trying to bring the numbers on this side, we're going to bring the number on that side. Let's, let's get rid of this one, let's bring this one over here. How do we do that? By adding one to both sides. Now, here on the right hand side, on the right hand side we have a negative one and a positive one, they're going to kill each other. And we're going, to left, we're going to be left with 6m, and 6m would have to equal, 6m would have to equal negative 4 and a positive 1, which is negative, negative 5 and a positive 1, which is negative 4. We're not interested in the value of 6m, we want the value of m. Let's divide both sides by 6. If you divide both sides by 6, 6 is going to drop out from here, and m, m equals, m m would have to equal negative 4 over negative 4 over 6 negative 4 over positive 6 4 and a 6 they have a common factor of 2 we can we can reduce it if we divide top and bottom by 2 4 divided by 2 is 2 6 divided by 2 is 3 so we end up with negative 2 third negative 2 third m equals negative 2 third m equals negative 2 third now we need to verify it. We need to go back and verify it, make sure it actually makes sense. Where can we verify it? I left no room for verification. Let's do it down here. These were the three words we came across yesterday's, in, in the yesterday's video. What I, what, I, what, I, what I said yesterday was that when you have to figure out the value of expressions, that's what we were doing yesterday. We were, trying, we were, we were evaluating the value of algebraic expressions. Listen carefully. When you have to figure out the value of algebraic expressions, be generous with parentheses. Don't don't be don't be shy. Don't be timid. Uh, there are there is no shortage of parentheses. I already checked. They're still manufacturing plenty of them. Use as many parentheses as you can to make it easier on your eyes to see see what's going on to keep track of the numbers. The plural of parentheses is parentheses. The I becomes e. Parentheses parentheses. Analysis analyses. Hypothesis hypotheses. All the i's turn into e in the plural form. That's all. Let's verify it here. We are claiming that m equals negative 2 over 3. Here's the equation. 6m minus 1. 6m minus 1. 6m minus 1 has to equal negative 5. 6 times m. m is negative 2 over 3, but we're not going to put it in this form. It will be easier if we leave it in the original form. Negative 4 over positive 6. Negative 4 over positive 6. Negative 4 over positive 6. Minus 1. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. So here, here, we have a 6 on the bottom. We have a 6 on the top. They're going to kill each other. 
and we are left with negative 4 and a negative 1, negative 4 and a negative 1 is negative 5. It checks out. It's fine. This value is correct. It checks out. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.